Hello, Zoke here for AMVT Productions tutorial series for the Adobe products. Here's what we're going to be making today as I show you how to do some timing and how to manipulate your keyframes so that after you do one set of timing, you don't have to keep redoing it for every individual effect you want to animate. You can reuse your keyframes doing some expressions. So here's what we're going to be making today. Any moment. Alright, nothing too fancy, but I didn't put a whole lot of effort into it. Alright, first things first, I'm going to take this and parent it to my little wiggler I made in one of the other lessons. It's just got a expression to wiggle the position and a slider control to control its speed. Next, we're going to take a directional blur and apply it to the footage. It's just some random footage I grabbed. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to snag the one from the completed, but I applied some expressions to it to get it to self animate. Just going to copy it and paste it so it's already animated. There's the blur length. So to do the timing, just go into the audio and go down to waveform. This is a nice song because it's nice and sharp and clipped, and you can see the peaks in it very well. In order to make the peaks more pronounced, in Premiere you can just stretch it out. In you could stretch it out a bit too, but it gets ridiculously too big. So just go in and make it a bit louder. And that of course made everything stand out and be a bit more prominent and there's no way around the first time not really you can do some shortcuts and other things but if you want it to look right you're just gonna have to set the keyframes yourself so go in for the blur length I'm gonna delete all these just set a keyframe at zero page down over a frame 150 and page down some more about four times and then back to zero now all I'm gonna do is copy it move forward to the next beat paste it move forward to the next beat paste it and wash rinse repeat to my heart's content till I get bored with it I'm trying to hit just about every single peak so it looks a bit nicer than the demo I showed you. Didn't put too much effort into that. And be careful not to overlap them because it will give you some weird effects and it just won't look right. So make sure that each individual beat is its own individual beat when you go to paste it and it's not like halfway in between one or the other. It shouldn't be a problem for most beats but if they're really fast together like a snare drum or something like that you may want to go in and shrink it to maybe two frames and that one's kinda off alright that'll do and so for the most part it's shaking and those hit in time it looks alright alright next thing I don't like these black bars along the side so I'm just gonna take the scale and just scale it up so it fills it out now this is not the correct way to do it seeing as I have not selected the most important part of the scene as you can see right here half the half of May's face is cut off alright next we're gonna animate the wiggler so that with each of the beat hits it'll shake a bit more and make it just a bit harder so we're just going to go into the slider control and take all of our keyframes from the blur length and just copy and paste them in. So slider, paste. Whoops, make sure you are at the beginning and then hit paste. And they should link up. 
and they do. Alright, one thing, it doesn't look too bad, but it is a little much for my taste, so we're going to go and do some math with it. Alt click, effect slider control, uh, alt click, delete that, zero plus wiggle, comma, five comma value minus point five times that's the asterisk value. Now this is some math saying just wiggle it randomly five times per second the amount of the value. Return that and then subtract half the value from it so it's just lessening it a bit and otherwise I would have to go through and edit each one of these maximum keyframes down a bit so that it wasn't as much and now you can see it doesn't shake as much it's a bit less alright next I'm gonna apply a glow and have the glow hit the beats too just just for fun because this isn't that impressive I mean it's a radial directional blur my bad and some wiggling I mean nothing too special so let's make it look just a bit cooler take the glow apply it to that and go into the glow threshold first let's make it look good no you have to take it down quite a bit so 20 is what this is gonna take this to turn the radius up quite a bit I'm going to turn the intensity up to about 2 to give us a nice bright glow. Alright, and we're just going to take our previous keyframes again, the home key this time, and hit, let's see where's our glow, here it is, the threshold and just paste them over. Now you'll notice something, this is not right, they're hitting backwards, that's because Glow needs a higher value to be off and a lower value to be on. And these go low to high. We need this to go high to low. Real simple, just hit Alt click. Now these go 0 to 150. So I'm going to use 120 minus the value. Hit Enter. That means these durations is going to be at 100%. Then when it hits, it'll go down to 20%. Because 120 minus 150 is 30, but I don't know. That's what it returns, so. Yeah, I don't know, but it works. And that's a quick, simple way to reuse your keyframes to animate multiple effects and save you some time that way you're not having to go in and individually beat hit every single thing because that gets annoying and let's take a look and see what this looks like Turn it to half skip one frame and let's see what we got not too bad for five minutes of effort alright that's all for today so I will talk to you all later